Now, I had mentioned once before about uh, following vehicles and stopping distance so that, and I'll reiterate that because it's very important. Don't come any closer to the vehicle in front of you than you can see every part of it, especially the rear tires of that vehicle. Do not come any closer and do not ever tailgate anybody. Now, I told you that I try to go either five miles under or exactly the speed limit. The truth of the matter is I usually go the speed limit only because the rest of the traffic, I'm doing 60 or 65, which is the maximum they allow transporters to travel. So say that I'm doing 65 miles an hour. The daggum traffic normally is trying to do 85 or 90. So you are the biggest pain in the butt to truckers, other fast hot rodders, the little Japanese cars, they just hate you. That's their problem, you've got a job to do. The reason for this is, if you're going to speed limit or under, you aren't tailgating anybody, and you are very unlikely to get a stone bruise in that windshield. Now the stone bruise in that windshield, that's your responsibility. If you have construction trucks or uh, cars throwing stones and you get a, a chip in that windshield or a crack, that's your responsibility. And some of these windshields can be, they have to take that whole front clip off and redo it to put the windshield in because they're not put in a lot of times like a normal windshield. They're put in from the back side of the clip, and, uh, front that whole front piece, and sealed in there. So they have to pull that front clip off. It can be like $4,000. The story I have for that is we're taking stuff up into the Alaskan border up above Edmonton, Alberta. There's five of us. The guy in the lead has a nasty habit of uh, tailgating the next vehicle in front of him. I don't know why you can't break him of it, but he just loves to get right up on somebody's butt. Well, we get up there above Edmonton, Alberta, and we're going to pass these vehicles off to a transporter, which is going to take them up into the Yukon. So we have a staging yard we're taking them up to. We didn't want to go to the Yukon. Because once you've gone all the way up past Edmonton, your butt is so sore and you are so tired in Canada, you're ready to turn around and go home. So luckily enough, they're staging them up there in a big yard, the, the vehicles and then other transporter drivers can take them up into the Arctic, above the Arctic Circle. Anyway, to make a short story long, we get there and this lead guy has 22 pecs or stone bruises in that windshield. Now, a couple of the other RVs did have a little tiny stone bruise in them. But this guy, I don't know, he's ta uh, tailgating, but up there they use pea gravel instead of sand or salt because the temperature gets so cold that sand and salt don't work down below 10 below zero. Pea gravel, little tiny marbles do, but trucks throw them like crazy. So you, any trucks or heavy equipment, you stay right the heck away from it. This guy ran ahead of us and loved the tailgate, and he just said, you know, they said, what the hell were you thinking after you got the first stone bruise? And he said, well, I was stuck behind this construction truck, and that guy just kept throwing gravel. I was flashing my lights and doing everything I could, blowing the horn, and he just kept dropping gravel and spitting it out in the thing, and it kept hitting the windshield. And he went, you idiot, why did you just stop and let all the trucks go by till there's nobody in front of you? He says, well, I wanted to get it here on time. He says, well, it's going to be almost $4,000 to get that windshield up here and then get a three-man crew to put it back, replace it, because the people who fix windshields are going to fix that for, you know, $100 twenty dollars. They'll vacuum it and drill it, you know, whatever, epoxy it or whatever. And they'll repair that damage. Or if they can't, they replace the windshield, especially if it's a big long crack. But don't be crazy. You owe for all those uh, scratches and nicks and dents and cracks. That's your windshield. So if you drive the speed limit, pretty much everybody is passing you. And if you run into somebody that you're tailgating, 
within 10 seconds, if you're closer than 10 seconds to them, they have a chance of throwing a stone enough to stay in midair to hit your vehicle. If you're 10 seconds behind them, pretty much 99% of the time that stone is not in midair. It's somewhere rolling down the road or off to the side by the time you get to it. So that safety space in front of you is not just for stopping, it's also for uh, damage because I've seen trucks drop part of their load off on the road. If you're right behind them, there's no way of getting away from it. So I'm not trying to sound like a know-it-all. This is all from experience. I've paid for maybe four windshields in 12 years. So it happens. Okay, so you goofed up and you got a nick, a chip in your windshield, not a crack, but you've got a little star in your windshield. And uh, there's no way to get it out of there. You're going to have to turn it in. Here's the thing to consider. When you park that RV to be inspected, do not park it so that the sun is shining on that windshield. Because that, that chip will stand out like a sore thumb. Also, you want to take and look, get into a parking lot or look yourself and find a good greasy bug that has splattered on the radiator or the dash or whatever it is. Scrape the bug off and with your thumb grind it into the crack and if you have to put another bug over the top of it that looks like you splatted a bug um, and you just might, you might, I'm not guaranteeing you will, but some of them look from the inside too and that crack's going to show up through the bug a lot of times. But if it's a chip, you want to grind that bug gut into the chip so the chip doesn't reflect the sunlight and make the bug look like it uh, splatted on your windshield. A lot of times, they'll overlook bug splats. And sometimes they'll take a brush and scrub it a little bit to see if it's a crack or a chip. And the bug guts, a lot of times, will disguise the chip that guy signs for it, I'm sorry, it got chipped after you accepted it. Now for scuffs or really light scratches, like fingernail scratches, not gouges, but uh, a scuff mark on it uh, that has not taken the clear coat or the paint off, you want to get yourself, and I'll take a picture of it, you want to get yourself a little jar of Mother's, M-O-T-H-E-R-S, Chrome Polish. Now this is a real light polish or rubbing compound. It's light rubbing compound is what it is, but it has no wax in it. It's just strictly polish. Nice soft washcloth or towel. Uh, try not to use paper towels. They're too abrasive. They'll leave a cloud on there. Put a nice washcloth from the hotel or a piece of towel and mothers will take that uh, scuff right off and put a gloss on the whole thing. But you want to make sure if you do that, you either do the whole panel so that it doesn't draw attention to that area that you buffed it. If you want to disguise it, you get a can of Lemon Pledge furniture polish and you lightly spray that area, but don't wipe it, because what it'll do, it will put a dull finish on that entire panel. And you want to spray a good area so they don't draw any attention to wherever you uh, buff that scratch out. If you actually have a scratch where the paint is missing, there's a way of dealing with that too. And I'll have to do a whole chapter whole entire chapter on that, on how to repair a scuff. Now, if it's a dent, you're almost screwed. I went the car in front of me one time, and I'm not trying to sound like an angel, just stuff happens out here. The car in front of me hit one of the construction barrels, like these ones you see up the side of the road, and this thing just shattered. It came unglued. One of the pieces with the top end of it it was about three pieces. 
the bottom end, luckily enough, went over the Jersey barrier, but the top end went between the Jersey barrier and my RV and put a dent in the bottom panel, front panel, on the passenger side of that RV. I wish I'd have kept a picture of it, but you try not to keep leave any evidence. It put a dent in it, maybe about uh, three inches long, and a heck of a scratch. It took the paint right down to the right down to the metal for about an inch. And I'm thinking, man, I am truly screwed. So I took a nap. I thought about it. I parked the thing and just thought life is over. It's going to be a million dollars to replace that whole panel. Um, I won't admit to this if they bring me to court, but when my mind finally figured it out, it figured out to stop the auto, auto body shop or supply, well, um, AutoZone, pick up a small can of uh, body putty and sandpaper, and I, I like 250 and 400 grit sandpaper. So I sanded the paint down where the scratch was so that it would hold the body putty. I put body putty on it with a squeegee. Then I sanded it out smooth. Then I used red putty a glazing compound, which smooths out any scratches you left in it from the sandpaper. And then I painted an extra stripe on the front of that vehicle to match it looked like it was kind of a real dark brownish red color so I painted an extra accent stripe just enough to cover that where the dent was and the repair was on that going down to the bottom edge of the RV and then went over to the other side lightly sanded that and painted another stripe over there so it looked like it was planned in the thing and it did sneak through but that's like the worst case scenario. If uh, you got somebody that, if you don't do body work and you got somebody that can, trust me, it'll be cheaper for them to do it than it will to turn that into the RV place because they're looking to make tons of money off of you or the factory or anybody from that RV. You have no friends out here in the RV or in transporting. Did I mention that before? Let me mention it again so you understand. You have no friends.